Well, good morning. This is Pastor Wilson, Jesus Ministries, Bread of Life. Wanted to say welcome uh, to our broadcast today. Uh, Apostle Linda and Evangelist uh, Moxham and about half of the church are in Jamaica today on a mission. And so we're going to wish them well. We've been praying, and I'm asking you to pray as well. Now, today, uh, Evangelist Joey Wilson is going to break the bread of life with us. Uh, we just want to pray for him as well. You know, they don't get very many opportunities. And so today, uh, God said, just let him uh, do whatever the Spirit of God has impressed upon him to do. So I want you to pull up your chair and just take note of the Word of God. After all, that's how we have to live. And so today, give Brother Joy a good God bless you as he brings the word of life to us. We'll see you after the broadcast. Yeah. First, I give honor to my Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, to the shepherds of this house, and the ones that are in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask you to decrease me and increase you in me. Amen. Holy Ghost, use my mouthpiece for your glory. Yes. I thank you. I give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Lord, been working on me with this scripture, with this message. Okay? This message can be bring fire and brimstone. Okay? This message is not a beat down. Okay? It's a lift up. For all of us to check is where we're at. Okay? If it finds you, that means that you're not in the right place where you should be in Christ. And we all been there. So don't take it as an offense because this word's going to meet each and every one of us wherever we're at. And so this message today, the Lord gave me, if he can make a donkey talk in Numbers 22, he can use whoever he wills mm -hmm. to get the message across for his glory. I didn't say for my glory or for anybody else's glory, for his glory. So he gave me this message, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. <laughs> okay, but we ain't talking about the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. We're talking about the two ain'ts and the one saint and still the big bad wolf, which is the devil. So the Holy Ghost said to me, Tell my people, quit coming into the house of the Lord thy God empty-handed. And what he means is, quit leaving your sword at home. And if you don't got your sword, which is the Holy Bible, go to the dollar store, go and get you one. But don't come to the house of the Lord without it. Take it wherever you go, not only in the house of the Lord, but wherever you go. And don't come to the house of the Lord without a notebook. So you can write down the message. Write down the scriptures so you can go back and chase the scriptures. And what I mean by chasing the scriptures is when you go and you look at the scripture, go to the footnotes and it will have other scriptures. And you write down those scriptures and then you chase those ones. There's only two things that are going to happen. Either it's going to bring you all the way back to the original scripture, or it ain't going to be nothing. Then you're going to get the full revelation of what the Lord is trying to teach us, what he's trying to show us. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So, as I go to the first, the first part of this, there's four parts to this message. And the first part is the wolf, the devil, Satan, Lucifer. Coming out of Isaiah 14, starting in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14. 
I will ascend alone the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit. Revelations, verse 12. Starting in verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels, the devil. Verse 8, and he prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old servant called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his, Christ, of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which had accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in. Then woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knows that he has but a short time. Job, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to the presence of themselves before the Lord. And Satan, the adversary, accuser, also came among, among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come then? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming around on the earth and from walking around on it. Verse Peter 5 through 5, verse 8. A roaring lion seeking whom I may devour. So I'm here to tell you that Lucifer was, God created him, the most beautiful creature, creation that he has created. He used to, he eliminated God's glory. He had everything. He was in paradise. He was in the third heaven and God's throne. He had power. He used to uh, and be in, in control of the music. So he was there, and so then pride, he let pride get in and come about, and then he thought, well, I'm going to make my throne above God's throne. I'm going to be higher than him. God said, not so. You out of here. So even today, Lucifer still, not just Lucifer, the devil and everybody that God has created is still subject to God. Wherever they go, you can't run, you can't hide, you're still going to have to answer to Christ Jesus. Because he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there is no other. So as we go on this journey, all we got to do is we know that we got to call on the name of Jesus because he already came down here and showed us the way, how we can do it. Whatever we go through, whatever troubles we're in, he gave us that option because before in the Old Testament, they used to burn animals and stuff for sacrifice for, but then that had become a time that God said, that's, that ain't happening. It's not working no more. The Lord said, create a body for me. I'll go. Mm -hmm. So he prepared a body for him. Now, Christ is the very core of God. Okay? Because if you go back in Genesis, and you, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. He spoke and with authority, and it happened. Because Christ is word, so he came out from the very bosom of the Father. And when God spoke, it happened. So, 
be encouraged, okay? Wherever you're going through, whatever you're doing, put Christ first. Because it says in John 6, 633, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added on to you. It didn't say some things, but we got to put Christ first. Even before our, for our wives, before our children, before the husbands, you put Christ first and he'll add everything together and, and he'll form us together as one as he is one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, the second part of this is one of the ain'ts, okay, which is Judas. Okay, you all know the story about Judas. He betrayed Jesus. We're going to be reading out of John chapter 6, verse 7. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? Mm -hmm. So he already knew from the start because he created everything from the beginning to the end. He already knows. So we can't run. We can't think we're putting up. We're hiding. We're keeping that secret sin or we're keeping, we're hiding this and nobody knows. Christ knows. So let's quit playing church and playing with God and let's get right. Okay? Repent. And God is so merciful. Christ is so merciful. His blood is slain for us. All we got to do is go to him and say, Lord, I, I messed up. It's me. David said, create me a clean heart. I, it's me. I messed up. And God is so merciful and he loves us so much that he will. And he'll forget it no more. Verse 6, still. Verse, I mean, chapter 6, verse 71. He spoke unto Jews at Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. And they asked, the disciples were asking each other, do you, is it? Is it me? They're going back and forth. John chapter 12, verse 4. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot's son who would betray him, said, in verse 5, still in chapter 12, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for the 300 denarii and given to the poor? Question. Because Judas was the treasurer. He, was, he had the money box, but he was a thief. He used to get in the money box and he used to steal from it. Verse 6. Then he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. John 13, verse 21. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Moses surely... I say to you, one of you will betray me. Chapter 13, verse 26. Jesus answered, and it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread. When I have dipped it, and having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Verse 27, chapter 13. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him, then Jesus said, to him, what you do, do quickly. So Judas went about what was already in his heart to go and do. So sometimes we have something in us, okay, that it doesn't matter. People say, you know, don't do it, don't do this, or whatever, when you were younger. And you would say, no, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm trying to do, I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. But now as we came across onto the other side before we were not saved, we weren't, but now we are, so now the Holy Ghost that abides in us, if we're saved, now the Holy Ghost speaks to us and tells us not to do that. But whatever's in you comes forth out of your mouth that was already in you. So we need to speak life to each other and not death and build each other up. So Matthew 26, verse 14. 
Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest. Verse 15, and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. He was, he was greedy. He was a thief and he was greedy. And he betrayed the Son of Man. Then Judas, in Matthew 27, verse 3, Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Now, he was remorseful, but he didn't repent. Being sorry or remorseful is not repenting. Repenting is what you've done, not turning around 360 and do it again. Okay, it's 180. That means turn directly the opposite way and do not more. And say, Lord, look, I, I'm sorry. Verse 27, verse, chapter 27 in Matthew, verse 4, saying, I have sinned, but betrayed in the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Mm. Verse 5. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Okay? He didn't repent. He hung himself. So guess what? Where the tree lies, so the judgment. So hell is his home. Because there's no repentance after the grave. That's why we, as believers, saints, need to stay on the road of repentance because we fall short of the glory of God every day. And Luke 22, but Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas kissed the door of heaven but went to hell. Because Christ was the door to heaven. It says it in John. The only way you can come to the Father is that you come through me. I am the door, the truth, the way, and the light. Okay, now we're to the third part of this message. And it is the other ain't. And it is the unbeliever. Okay? The lost soul. Because we must be born again. Okay, Jesus had a conversation with um, Nicodemus. Okay, in John 3, verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said it to him, Verily, verily, I say unto the, to you, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But Nicodemus was a well-educated religious person, okay, but he wasn't thinking, he was, he was asking, he was thinking, well, how can I, I go back into my mother's womb and be born again? He was thinking through the flesh, but not through the spirit. In verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless he's born of water and spirit. The water is Christ. The spirit comes after you're born again and cleanses you. And then the next step is you can be baptized and be immersed in water and when you come up you're refreshed, you're cleansed, okay? You're um, telling God that you are going to give him all of you and continue on your journey in truth. In verse 6, 
That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. They both war against each other. That's why this is a life and death message, okay, to each and every one of us, not just to all of you, but to me too, because every day we got to kill this flesh. Because either we're going to walk in the flesh or we're going to walk in the spirit. The word, Jesus says, either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, if you're in the middle trying to play both sides, I'll screw you out of my mouth. So in Luke chapter 11, verse 9, so I say to, to you, ask and it will be given. To you, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. And verse 10, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Because Christ is the door. If we come to him, humble, and say, Lord, look, I'm struggling with this. This is going on in my life. And I know you already know because you created me. So, Lord, help me. Get to the place that I need to be in you. And verse 13, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask you? Mm -hmm. So in Romans 10, 9, that if we, that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the first step of being, starting to be, to be born again. First, you have, we have to repent from our sins. We have to receive Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And let him come in and clean us up. Because we all filthy rags. Until we were all lost until we found Christ. Then the process starts. Now I can tell you that on my journey, I was hooked on meth for 21 years. It caused me a lot of problems. Not only meth, but coke, LSD, marijuana, alcohol. I was all bound to these things. Okay, it caused me so much grief because I was so high out of my mind, I got ran over by a car. I was pronounced dead in a uh, newspaper. I was in the hospital for six months. I was comatose. Uh, Christ, my dad came out of prison in shackles, and they brought him. And he said, no, that's my, my son just arrested me. So Christ had a different plan for me. And he woke me up. And I tell you, my sister was the only one that was there out of all my family. She was by my side the whole time. So Christ was there from the start. Mm -hmm. And so that situation, that I didn't listen. You know, I got out. I got there. And I went back out on the streets and started standing up again. And started doing the things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. So it caused me problems. Okay? I flipped trucks. I dumped motorcycles out in the desert. I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. I've had pistols stuck to my head. And because of all this, death has been at my door many a time. But I'm here to tell you, that if we can just say yes to Christ Jesus, we'll say no to the devil. Amen. Now I'm telling you that this journey that I was on, when I first started it, I used to tell myself, man, I don't know how I'm going to ever get off this mess. However I'm going to get, get off of smoking, 
cigarettes and doing all this until it came a time that a person, an evangelist, told me about a man named Jesus. And when I said, I can't do it no more, Lord, I keep on hitting the brick wall. I spent eight and a half years in prison to let you know that I can't do it myself and I can't do it without you. But first I got to seek Christ Jesus because he's the one that's going to carry me and keep me and he's going to keep every one of you. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his holy name. Yes, Hallelujah. yes. The fourth part of this message is the saint. Okay? Apostle Paul. But before Apostle Paul, it was Saul. Okay? In Acts 9, verse 3, it says, As, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. A sudden, a, suddenly a light shone on him from heaven. In verse 4, Then he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? In verse 5, and he said, Who are you, Lord? Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gourd or the prick. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep coming up and, and against me? Why do you keep kicking against? Verse 13, <coughs> against my plan, against what I got. Then Ananias, in verse 13, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many, but about this man. See, God had spoke to Ananias and told him to go on and, and meet Saul. Because when Saul was, when he got knocked off by the light, he was blinded, couldn't see. So God spoke to Ananias to go lay hands on Saul and told him where to go. But Ananias said, Lord, hear the word of the Lord. And Ananias answered the Lord, and I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to the saints, binding them, persecuting them, killing them. See, that can take us back to where we used to be when we were out there, who we were hurting. And we were hurting our, not only were hurting ourselves, but we were hurting our family members, our children, our people around us, the people we work with. And here in verse 14, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who called on your name, the name of Christ. The name above all names, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hand on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, and this is in verse 17, as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. See, we need, not only when we receive Christ Jesus and say, look, Lord, the old has passed away, but now he's put the, the new spirit, the new being in us, the new creation. Now we're starting out fresh. Now we need to answer the call. We need to get in our place. We need to start doing what was right. And on that journey, we're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. But don't let it go. Don't let, well, I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. No, we live for today because tomorrow is not promised to us. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit, it's not a thing. When the Holy Spirit is poking at you saying, you shouldn't have said that, or you shouldn't have did that, or you should have been there on time, or you should have done this, take heed to it because all disobedience is sin. In God's eyes. Not in our eyes, but in God's eyes. That's why he sent his son. 
So it, it's not just a, the little sin, because people want to justify, well, that little lie, that's just a little sin. But that man over there pulled out a pistol and shot somebody in the head, that's a big sin. No. All sin is sin in God's eyes. There's no little sin, big sin. So sin is sin. But repentance brings us back. Here's the word of the Lord. In Acts 5.3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the piece of the land for yourself. See, Ananias and his wife had some property, some land, and they sold it. But then when Peter asked them, is this all the money? They said, yeah, that, Ananias said, yeah, that's all the money. But he kept back some. So he lied to the Holy Ghost. Okay? And then, in verse 5, Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came out upon all those who heard these things. So after he told the lie to the Holy Ghost, he dropped dead right there. So that little lie took Ananias out of here. Where do you think he is? There's no... There's no repentance beyond the grave. That tells us each and every one of us. So when we're on our journey, we need to take care of our Father's business. Take care of the Lord's business on all what we do. When we put our hands to the plow, keep them to the plow. Mm -hmm. Keep your hands busy. Whatever it is, you'll lack of nothing. God will always continue putting something in your in your storehouse so you can bring to the Lord's house so you can help your brother so you can help your sister if they're struggling because once we were struggling and now God has blessed us to be a blessing to somebody else and verse 10 that Ananias' wife lied too then immediately she fell down at his feet and bred her last and the young men came in and found here her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. <clears throat> Not only did her husband lie, but she died. And so they both died. Okay? So to recap this whole message, okay, for all of us. So Christ Jesus, thy God, took the one that was the most beautiful creation, had all, I mean, he had it going on in God's throne, okay? Because he was beautiful. He was, used to illuminate his glory. But then he turned and went to the dark side because of sin. He was the first one that sinned. Because he was the one that got kicked out of heaven. And then he went and deceived Adam, he went to see Eve, and then Adam and Eve, that's how sin came forth. That's why Christ Jesus had to come for us. Because the, the bridge was broken. Adam gave up dominion. And so Christ had to come, come and fill that gap. Because by the blood of the Lamb. So then, he took the unbelievers and brought him in, cleaned him up, and turned him around. And they took a saint. See, it took a saint. It took the ain't to bring him in because, look, we are chosen. We are vessels. Okay? We are servants to each other. Okay? For Christ Jesus first, but let us be a vessel for his glory. Because we were a lost soul at one time. So now we need to go and help the one that's lost and witness to them 
and bring them. Let the Holy Ghost use you as a vessel to bring an ain't to a saint. And teach, let the Holy Ghost work through us to teach them. To show them. So they can get to the place that they need to be in Christ Jesus like we are. Because we are all once lost. And I just thank the Lord for where he's brought me from. And I thank him for the beautiful woman of God that he blessed me with. Because he sent me a jewel. He sent me a priceless jewel. I had to go search for it. He brought it to me. Now, not every day was Sunday, okay? Because I was still in my mess. But it took a praying woman of God to pray when I was out there being, I was going to hell. I was on my way to hell until I had an encounter with Christ Jesus. And we all need to have an encounter because... When I was in Gospel Echoes, when I first came in and I met Apostle Linda and Pastor Fred, just a small little church, 30 people, and these two prophets came and they would, God would use them mightily, and they uh, prophesied over everybody there. Well, I'm here to tell you when when the Lord got to me, he spoke to them and he said, I've called you twice, I'm not calling you again. Do you accept this call? And it it, it blew me, if I would ask me, I, I was speechless. I said, I shook my head and I was like, and the Lord said, I take that as a yes. And I said, yes. From that day, my whole life changed. Amen. Okay, the process started, okay? I'm not going to tell you it was easy, but I had to stay on course. I had to stay on course. I had to stay on my post. I had to keep pressing forward. But people were coming from all, devils were coming from all over the place, the people. But I'm here to tell you that when I said yes to Jesus, I said no to the devil. All the addictions, everything that the, the devil had me bound to, Christ took it from me just like that. Amen. No withdrawals, nothing. So I'm here to tell you. Amen. Let's kick, let's Hallelujah. kick the devil out the door. Jenny come to, to give the devil a black eye. I come to knock him out. Okay, because the, that's what we need to do. Let the, the devil know that we are Holy Ghost filled, and we come to take you out. That's right. And you know what? And that is our job, so we can bring more that are lost into the fold to be saved. Yes. And Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what the Lord has gave me. I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Fred. I thank you all for being here. And all the ones that are in Jamaica and all the ones that are watching. Amen. Keep praying the Lord and praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Well, Joyce, I need you to find out if anybody needs prayer today. I'm going to let you do the whole. Anybody? The floor is open. Anybody needs prayer today? Hallelujah. Anybody going through something that need the Lord to do something for them? If there is, come forth. And we'll touch and agree. Amen. Amen.
Help me sing that.
offering came. Praise God. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And then we turned it over to him and let him do what he's supposed to do today. Amen. Well, y'all know all this part of service. We can all yep. amen. Amen. participate. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Come forth and just bring God your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Whatever's on your heart, amen. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come to you right now. Father God, amen. Good afternoon. It's me again. Uh, I just want to thank you today for tuning in. Hope that the word of God was a blessing to you. Now, uh, I want to solicit your prayers just once more uh, for our team Jesus who's in Jamaica, still evangelizing. I forgot to mention that uh, my deacon is the only man with those women. And so we are blessed to have somebody there who is so outgoing and so loving. After all, you know, Jesus said it was with loving kindness that I've drawn them. And so uh, it's my prayer today that, that they would show that loving kindness and that someone would be saved. Someone's life will be changed just as I pray that your life was changed today by this broadcast. So until next week, we'll see you. God bless you and God keep you.